Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, this Monday edition of the Summer Devo. We welcome you. I'd love to know who's on here. Why don't you take a moment, put your name in the comments. Also, we'd love to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests, put those in the comments as well. And we'll be praying um, together for one another this week. We're going to start the week, Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. here on the Summer Devo in the Word. What an awesome day yesterday. I'm still just thanking the Lord for um, what He did yesterday in our lives at City Hills. So many, um, just so many stories of what God's doing as people step back into that calling that God has on their life. You are called to lead and you're making an awesome decision as a leader to get in the Word, uh, to study what God would say in His Word today. Well, we're in the book of Ephesians, so grab your Bible, grab a cup of coffee, and uh, we're going to look at one of my favorite passages of Scripture because it talks about who we are, our identity in Christ. And a lot of people today are you know, spending a lot of time, energy, effort trying to find out their past um, or trying to get a, a glimpse in their future, trying to look at their past and try to figure out all the pieces or look into the future and just to get a glimpse of what's going to happen. Well, Paul, this is not a new idea because Paul here in Ephesians um, gives us a picture of who we were and who we're going to be, who we were, who we are, and who we're going to be. So let's look at it together. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 1, the scripture says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince and power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind." Paul gives really a dismal picture of who we used to be. He says, it's not that you were just a bad person. Um, It's not that you were just going through some stuff in your past, some issues in your past. I think sometimes we um, can diminish um, what sin is and the impact that it has on our life and had on our life in the past. Note, Paul is writing this to people that had already given their lives to God. He's writing them to really speak to them about the truth of how sin was affecting their lives and who who they really were. Um, Charles Spurgeon said this, uh, The reason we think too lightly of the Savior is because we think too lightly of sin. Only He is the one who has stood before God, uh, filling, the rope of God, God, filling the rope of God's judgment around His neck. Only he will be the man who um, weep. Only that man will be the one who weeps for joy when they're pardoned and hates the evil that he has been uh, forgiven from. What was Spurgeon saying? He was just saying that many times we don't take time to remember and to feel um, what it was like before we knew Jesus. He says that's where you were. You were you were in sin. Um, you were following the enemy. Um, you were actually a follower of Satan. You were separated from God. You had no hope. You were the one that was fighting against God. And um, what would you think God would do? You think God would just be so angry um, at our disobedience of our sin that he would want to be so far from us, not just, just let us go, not care about us at all? Well, the next um, two words in the Bible are the two words that changed everything for us. The next verse, verse 4, but God, but God, rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved. I love that that line, but God. <laughs> You know, God rescued us, but God, I want to just say you were worth rescuing. I don't know what um, lies of the enemy that he's been putting in your mind about who you are. Maybe it's something that someone spoke over you. Uh, Maybe when you look in the mirror, you see someone that's inadequate. Maybe all you're reminded of constantly is your past or your imperfections or um, who you're not. Maybe that's a daily basis. The enemy's coming against you. I want to tell you those two lines, 
Those two words, but God, change everything. And this is a weapon that we can use against the enemy. Let's look at it one more time. What did God do? It says, but God loved us. His great love in which you are someone worth loving. And he didn't love you whenever everything was going right in your life. He loved you while you were in sin. He loved me while I was in sin. God saw value in us whenever we uh, were doing all the wrong things. That's the amazing grace of God. I, I love that, that phrase, but God, because it shows how God loved us, um, how God, but God saved us, but, but God has made a way for us. And there are all kinds of situations that we're facing this week um, as a church, as a body, you know, just as individuals, that, that we need a but God type moment in our lives. We need God to just do a fresh work in us. And, and I was thinking about this, that phrase, that phrase, but God, and how it's been used many times in the scripture uh, to give great hope. Watch this in the, in the story of Joseph. Um, because the patriarchs, or Joseph's brothers, were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt. Oh, that looked like there was no hope. But what's the next line? But God was with him. I don't know what situation you're facing this week. I want you to I want to tell you we serve a God who even what people mean to intend to be evil against you God can use it for good. That was a story in Joseph's life. Joseph's brothers wanted to take him and because of their jealousy of him they took him and they sold him into slavery, but God was with him. I want to say to somebody this morning, God is with you. You are not alone. If you have a God who would send his only son when you were his enemy, when you were in sin, when you were not doing anything, when you were dead, God's going to take care of whatever situation you're walking through today. God loves you. God saves you. That's what uh, the story of Joseph says again in Genesis 50, 20. We talk a lot about having 20, 20 vision. I think we need to have 50, 20 vision. What is that? It says, you intended to harm me, but God, there it is again, intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Again, whatever the enemy meant for evil, God can use for good. So God saves us. And watch what he says next in Ephesians chapter 2. And raised us up with him and seated us with him. I want to stop there. And on the cross, Jesus took our place. But not only did Jesus take our place, but because of what he did, we took his place. Talk about grace. He said, not only do we not get the penalty and punishment of sin, Jesus took that. Now we're seated with him. in. So now we're seated in heavenly places. We've been seated with Christ. I think sometimes we spend all of our lives frantic trying to make everything happen. And, and I want to tell somebody today, you know, like I say at church every week, hey, you may be seated. What's, what are we saying when we say that? Say, hey, this is a moment where you can rest. This is a moment where you don't have to be in control. You may be seated. That's what the scripture says. He seated us with Christ. In the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, we are in Christ not just in this world, we are in Christ, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man can boast. If we could just for a little bit today get a glimpse of our past and remember where Jesus saved us from look at our present and realize but God changes everything in our lives even the situations that seemingly people are coming against us in some way God's going to use it for good even the things where the enemy's trying to attack us but God is going to use it for good and then if we could get a glimpse of the future that God has for us the future of being in Christ for all eternity and all the things that God has planned for us in the coming ages. 
This life is a vapor. The life to come, eternity with God, with God guys, it's going to be something unimaginable. It's something worth living for, worth trusting in Jesus, worth giving our lives to Him today. So on this Monday, I don't know what you're walking through, what's stressing you out, what has you fearful or afraid. Why don't we just take a moment, give it to God, be seated in Christ in heavenly places. Let's pray today. God, thank you so much for what you've done for us. Let us never get over how you've saved us. Lord, let us never never get over Lord, what you've done in our lives. Lord, use us. Use us today, God, as instruments to just be witnesses of your grace and your goodness and your favor in our lives, God. Lord, I just pray for anyone that's going through stressful or uh, hard situations this morning. I pray that you would help them be seated with you, trusting you. Not be anxious, but be trusting completely. Lord, that you're going to change the circumstances, God, in such a way. Lord, that's gonna, you're going to get glory out of whatever situation they're walked through. But God, Lord, you change everything. And so we thank you, God. We give this day to you. And we say, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, well, I hope you have an amazing uh, Monday. I can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day, City Hills. Oh, 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 oh,